Hey, what's up, family? Hey, today I want to do this video and tell you about the two times that I got beat up. Yes. I mean, what really happened was I was totally humiliated, embarrassed, and yes, I actually got beat up. Now, we know a lot of times growing up or whatever throughout our life, we go through all types of ups and downs. And some things that happen, it's just part of life growing up. But other things that happen, it stay with you for life. Where you be like, man, ooh, this just pissed me off. Just get me so vexation, vexation. You know what I'm saying? Give me such a vexation. And that's going to be the word of the day, vexation. You know, sometimes you may hear people say, man, I, I was vexed. That's just abbreviation for saying vexation. Now, if you look up the word vexation, it means to be very annoyed, frustrated, or worrisome. So in this case, I was very vexed. And to this day, it still kind of makes me vexed of uh, what happened. So let me get to the point. Let me get to the story. You're going to like this. Now, obviously, this first story, this happened when I was about second or third grade. Yeah, I know I'm a mature man now, but still, I could never forget this. This when I was a child, you know, I was living in Elizabeth up under my Aunt Hula and my Uncle Billy, uh, rules and regulations in their house, you know, because my mom's had passed away. But anyway, I remember I was like in the second or third grade. And I remember this one time, I'm, I'm school just let out and I'm crossing the street and I crossed in the middle of the street. And when I did that, it was this crossing guard, a fifth grader. I still remember her name. Her name, she had one of them, you know, them old school country birth, country name. Her name was uh, uh, Bertha. And she was big. And we used to make fun and be like, Big Bird Bertha. You know, we used to, children can be so uh, cruel sometimes, brutally honest and cruel. But anyway, I had crossed in the middle of the street. And, and Bertha had grabbed me from the back. And she was like, get over here. You're not supposed to be jaywalking. I, what? I didn't even know what the heck Jay Walking was. And yo, she grabbed the back of my coat and drug me all the way to the corner with my heels dragging on the concrete, just dragging me back. And I was like, get off me, get off me, get off me. I ain't playing, you better get off me. And the whole way, you know, all my friends laughing, like, ah, Big Bird just pulling them. And when we got to the corner, she finally let me go. And I was like, get off me, guy, play with you. And I was like, no, I'm going to punch you in the face. And she she went like this. She's like, what you going to do? And I was like, and I, I ran. Because Big Bertha was big. I ran, you know, of course, once I ran, I was like, Big Bird, Big Bertha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't messing with that girl. That girl was big. You know what I'm saying? She probably, without a doubt, would have whooped my butt. I mean, I was only in the second or third grade. But you know what I'm saying? That really had me vexed. You know what I'm saying? Vexation. Annoyed or frustrated. And I remember later that day, I remember when I went home, I had told my Uncle Billy about it. My Uncle Billy one that raised me after my mom's passed away. That's my mom's brother. So I remember I had to come, I had told him because I was just really mad. You know, I was really vexed. And I told him what, exactly what had happened. And I remember my uncle gave me some of the great advice that he's always did. He said to me, he said, boy, some fights you just can't win. You got to understand that's a part of life. Some fights you just can't win, no matter what you do. And I still ain't get it. Because I said, yeah, but, you know, just like my mother told me and you told me, if somebody, I'm fighting somebody and they bigger than me, you pick up a brick and you bust them in their head. He's like, yeah, you do, but you told me this was a girl, right? Listen, Lil Junior, some fights you can't win. You got to understand that, boy. He said, for example, let, let, let me explain to you. You a boy, if you would have fought that girl, let's just say she was your age. If you would have fought that girl, you would have beat up. Know what everybody would have said? Man, you beat up a girl. You a chump. You see? And then, then he said, now, if she would have beat you up, everybody would have still said, man, you got beat up by a girl. So either way, you can't win that. So it was like the way he broke it down to me, I was like, mm, I still was vexed. Like, I don't want to just accept that. But he was like, boy, that's just how it is. Some fights you can't win. You got to understand that, boy. And, you know, I just wanted to... Stand up to my fear, because that's what I was taught. But like he said, some fights you can't win. You got to remember that. And I just always had to remember that. Like, damn, man, you know, this girl, I can't stand Big Bertha. Big Bird, Big Bertha. <laughs> but anyway, I remember also 
like the things I used to say at times as a kid, you know, sometimes you say things you don't even realize what you say. I remember anytime I would get in some type of altercation with a slightly older kid, I was always quick to be like, man, don't make me go get my cousin Juba. I'm going to get my cousin Juba. Yo, I used to say that so much. I didn't realize it until one day I remember the kid down the street, Jimmy Williams. He asked to use my bike. And I remember Jimmy Williams, he said, yo, watch this trick I'm going to do. And he made the back, and he, a lot of people could wheelie the front, but he made the back wheel come up. I had never seen that before. And I was like, oh, sweat, that's the joint. Because, you know, that's how Joe used to talk back in the days. Oh, sweat, that's the joint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he rode my bike for a while, but after a while, I was like, all right, man, give me my bike back. And he's like, man, I'll give it back to you when I feel like it. And I said, like, man, you better give me my bike back, man, I ain't playing. And I remember he came up to me, he said, what you going to do? Once again, like, like Big Bird, what you going to do? And then he said, what you going to do? do? Go get your cousin Jumba since you think he, he could beat everybody up. And I remember when Jimmy said that, I didn't even mention my cousin's name. But when he said that, a bell went off in my head. I was like, damn, do I always be saying that? Every time I get in an altercation with an older guy, I be like, don't make me go get my cousin Jumba. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I always was. But, you know, this is the family that raised me, which I'm very appreciative of. My cousin Pretty and all of them. Appreciate y'all. All the stuff I learned from y'all growing up. But anyway, let me get to story number two. Because I had to mention that. Because a lot of these times, you got to remember, you got to stand up to fear. You can't always let fear overwhelm you. And that's another one of my videos. And it touches on that. Sometimes kids get bullied. And you got to sometimes stand up to fear. But like my uncle said, some fights you can't win. But that's another one of my videos. It's called Standing Up to Fear. Go to that and watch that. And I'm sure you guys appreciate that. But here's the second one. Remember, he said, some fights you just can't win. Now, that's when I was like in the second or third grade. Now, check this out. Look at this deja vu moment. That's another one of my videos. Trust me, y'all will really love that. That's an educational one, deja vu. Because we've all been through some form of deja vu where we're like, wow, I can't explain this. This seems like I've been here before. This is weird. It's crazy. Trust me, you'll love that. Deja vu. Go to my Sphinx 4 video. Subscribe, share, like, and comment. We'll go to deja vu. But let me get with the second story. I was about in the sixth grade now. Remember, the big bird, the big bird, big bird, big bird, big bird. That's when I was like in second, third grade. So what? What, I was like seven, eight, maybe, something like that. But now I'm, in, I'm like 12. I'm in the sixth grade. I'm learning. I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. I'm in the weight room, this and that. I remember we went to Baton Middle School. Now, the way it worked when I went uptown, moved uptown, the way the schools work, you know, it's four marking periods in the school year. But every middle school take one marking period and they choose a number of kids from like maybe like 90 kids from each different district. And you will go to this school called the Career Center, which was back for a whole marking period. Now, that Career Center, they had four floors. On the top floor was gifted and talented. The third and second floor was for all the other schools to come there. And in the basement was for the mentally challenged kids. And across the street, you know, they had Aboff. But in Baton, at the bottom was the mentally challenged kids. So you know how kids could be brutally honest and hurtful sometimes, the stuff we see out of our mouth as kids. So, you know, when we, now remember, I'm going way back to the 80s. I'm not trying to be offensive here. I'm just saying how it was so y'all can understand, paint a picture for y'all. So when we went to the school, I remember Mr. King gave everybody a prep when you first got to the school. He told us what was on the fourth floor, the second and third, where we belong, where all our classes would be here, then, this and that. And then he told us about the basement. He said, now listen, all y'all better understand in the basement floor, there's some kids here that's called, they're mentally challenged kids, but they're just like you kids, so don't think you're better than any of these kids. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Now, when I say mentally challenged, y'all better not be going around here saying they're retarded. Because I know a lot of y'all kids out here calling these kids retarded. They're not retarded. They, just, they got a little mentally challenged. Because some of you kids are, are mentally challenged. You're bad self. And, and, but the prep that he gave, he said, if y'all have any encounters with any of those kids, nobody played with Mr. King. That joke was fast and strong. And you cut class, he'll catch you. But anyway, he told us, he said, listen, if you have any encounters with any of them kids on the basement floor, the mentally challenged kids, you better not put your hands on them. Because if you put your hands on them, I'm going to put my hands on you. Y'all understand? So coming from Mr. King, we was like, oh, man, King. Man, what, but what are you talking about, them kids? What a coincidence. During about the middle of the semester, me, my boy, got in. He passed away. Rest in peace, got in. Me and my boy got in, Sean Howell, and there was a couple other cats we was with. I don't remember all the rest, but I remember them too because we used to hang together a lot. I remember we was cutting class, and we was walking all through the school, this and that. 
And then we say, yo, let's go in the basement. We went in the basement when we walking around. And what we didn't know is every now and then they give a privilege to one of the mentally challenged kids and they let them be a patrol officer. Just like in elementary, big bird, big bird. But anyway, we we in the basement and as we in the basement, all of a sudden, we see this, this kid as we, and he said, hey, what are you doing, you better damn kid now? And we was like, what? Man, shut up. You know, remember, we kids, we acting immature. We was like, man, shut up. What's your stupid self? And he's like, what? You go in here now. And he started running to us. And my boys, they all ran. And me, like a dummy, why did I stop? What the heck was I? I, could, I maybe I was just looking at him like, man, man you got to run from him, man. What are you going to What he going to do? That's how I was like, what are he going to do? See, you know, remember the video I did? Don't sleep on nobody. Nobody. Cause that's how I, that's why I didn't run. I was like, man, what are he gonna do? Little did I know. So he come over. He said, I thought you no funny. You're no supposed to be funny in your own way. And yo, he grabbed me, threw me up against the uh, lockers, and my boy's over there laughing. And he's like, I thought you. He went like this. He said, I thought you. You're never been funny. You don't be funny. And I was like, yo, man, get your hands off me. Don't be putting your hands up. And you know, my fist, I was ready to punch this, but I remember Mr. King say, you better not put your hands on him. I'm putting my hands on you. But this, this, when I said, man, get your hands, man, what's wrong with you? He said, you shut up. You shut up. You never put your big money in your day through anyway. And I, I was, man, and these jokers down here laughing. And I'm like, Shh. so finally, he let me down. He said, no, go to class. And, and then as I went to walk off, he did the, go to class. <laughs> When somebody slapped me in the back of the head, ooh, I swear I was so, what? Word of the day, vex, vexation, meaning frustrated or annoyed. And I was like, man, I'm gonna beat this joker up. Joker gonna slap me in the back of my head. Then he wrinkled my shirt and gonna throw me up again. Ooh, like your Sammy Sam for Bugs Bunny. Ooh, that's fully rabbit. That's how I felt like, mm, so vexed. But now I'm like, but. What a coincidence. My uncle said some fights you just can't win. You gotta just take the loss. You can't. What, what was I gonna do? I can't fight this kid. But check this. You think that was over? And as vexed as I was, vexation, as vexed as I was, I tried to let it go. But what a coincidence. Do you know it was only like the next day during lunchtime? As I'm about to eat my lunch in the cafeteria, I had to go to the bathroom, and wash my hands. As soon as I went in the bathroom, Soon as I opened the door, the, the mentally challenged kid was in there at the sink. And I swear, soon as I opened the door, he seen, he looked at me, he said, Hey, do it again. And he had water in his hand. He was like, and threw it in my face. He's like, yo, I thought you been on everybody no more. And I was like, yo, <laughs> wanna beat this guy up so bad. Damn it. And, and you know, I just had to take it. And what, like I said, deja vu. Right away, I thought about. The lessons my Uncle Billy told me, he's like, boy, some fights you just can't win. Think about it. Some fights you just got to take a loss. You can't win no matter what. It don't necessarily mean that you lost. It just that means you got to be the bigger and better person. Some fights you can't win. Now, think about it. Just like with Big Bird Bertha, here we go to Deja Vu moment, Raz. Okay. All my friends talking about, man, I wouldn't let him do that to me. I would do this. People always with that, right? I'm sure y'all can agree. People always saying what they would have, should have, could have did. Man, if that was me, I would punch him in the face. I said, what? Later when I was chatting with them, I said, oh, so you're going to tell me you're going to beat up the, the mentally challenged kid. So you, you tell me, damn right, damn. I said, yeah, right. Shut up, man. Y'all jokers kill me, man. So, but think about it. Like Big Bird Bertha, if I would have beat this mentally challenged kid up, what people would have said? Man, you beat up a mentally challenged man. You messed up for that. Hence the word, he... Push me up, threw water on me. Then they go, damn, man, you let that mentally challenged joker. He just disrespected you, man. I can't win. You know what I'm saying? The lessons of my uncle again. You see what I'm saying? Like he said, some, some fights you just can't win. You just got to be the bigger person, take a life learned lesson, and say, damn. <clears throat> Try not to let yourself be in certain predicaments. But boy, it was tough dealing with that. Like, mm, you son of a gun. So I know a lot of y'all thinking it wasn't a beat up like this. But you got to remember, when you're a kid, you get embarrassed over dragging me down the street. That was getting beat up. That was humiliating. 
And my friend's laughing. And then years later, the mentally challenged kid grabbed me like that, put his fingers on my face, throw water on me. Once again, it's some it was annoying. Like, I can't believe this. But you got to remember, some fights you can't win, like my Uncle Billy always said. Some fights, it don't mean that you lost. It just means that you got to be the bigger person and say, you know, and I know you could have beat the mess out of that boy. You might have got lucky and beat the girl. But to be honest, that girl probably whooped my butt. Because I ran when she was like, what you going to do? I was like, pew. <laughs> I remember stuff like that. Even my cousin Jumbo was like, see, boy, that's what you supposed to just told Pretty. Pretty would have beat her up. You should have got her. Yeah, you don't fight her. Did you get Pretty to beat her up? And I was like, yeah, man, because I hate her. I hate Big Bertha. <laughs> but, y'all, I ain't going to keep this video too long. A lot of y'all out there, like I said, these childhood memory stories. Go to my other video. I'm telling you, love. It's called Standing Up to Fear because it's an incident happening there. Another one, a childhood uh, actual fight that I did fight this joke about. There's my cousin, the other cousin, a cousin of my cousin in New Brunswick. And, whoo, oh, I got this joke about because I want to tolerate that jump with this cat. He, he wasn't no girl or no mentally challenged. I just, yo, you're going to get yours. And I got that joke. It's called Standing Up to Fear. Just go to my channel, Spink Four. Integrity, type in standing up to fear. But you see the, the correlation here of the deja vu, the mentally challenged kid and Big Bertha. What a coincidence. Both fights, you can't win. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I ain't going to keep this video too long. I'm going to end it in closing with saying another reason I love to mention my Uncle Billy quite a bit in this video because look at it this way. Well, I'm going to look at it this way. It's a dedication to him. He's no longer with us no more. But uh, that man taught me a lot. He was my uncle, my mother's brother, but however, he was like a father to me. You know what I'm saying? He taught me a lot growing up. You know, he got on my case a lot. As a kid, you know, he'd be like, man, you get on punishment, man, you can't stand up. <laughs> but <laughs> I appreciate all the lessons. And before he died, I was happy to say, you know, uh, he took time out of his schedule for me because I told him I was coming down his way. And we spent time together. We joked, we laughed, even though he couldn't talk much. But we shared a great moments together with my wife, my daughters, and it was wonderful. Because he's always said to me, boy, when I die, there's nothing you can do for me. All these people come to funerals when you die. You know, you spend time with people when they're alive. Hence, very important video of ours called Keeping Your Ancestors' Memory Alive. And see, that's why in this video I spoke about him so much. Because he meant so much to me. You know what I mean? So remember, if you want another heartfelt video, go to that one. Keeping your ancestors' memory alive. Sphinx for integrity and type in keeping your ancestors' memory alive. And that's why I talk about loved ones all the time. And so should you. Tell your family members about your loved ones. Uh, and on that note, subscribe, share, like, and comment. And I get more positive, meaningful videos out to you. On that note, peace.